in thinking about sustainable development, it's important that we keep a couple of distinctions in mind. One is the sustainable part, and that's sustainability. That has to do with meeting the needs of uh, the planet as well, as well as its people and living within the boundaries uh, that the systems of our planet essentially force upon us by the laws of nature uh, and even by the way that our societies are organized. So sustainable means that we can keep going. And of course, if we run out of water or energy or if we run out of political stability, we can't keep going. Then there's the development piece. And that has to do with change. It has to do with in what ways are we changing? What direction are we going? And sustainable development is about making sure that our direction of change, the direction of how we're emerging as a civilization, fits within the boundaries that sustainability requires. Regardless of whether we're talking about the environment, our economies, or the social conditions, or the human conditions that we're trying to create in this world. So that's what it means for me. It's not about being green. It's about understanding from a systemic perspective what the requirements of, uh, of a good future are in all of these domains and aiming ourselves educationally, economically, socially uh, in that direction. You know, doing sustainable development in practice is, is by definition complex because it involves getting these different important pieces of our civilizations working together better. That is our economic system, our social system, our relationship with the natural world and the natural resources that we depend on. That means a couple of things. One is it means that you, you must have a very uh, multidisciplinary, uh, multi-sectoral, uh, diverse approach. You must get a lot of people involved who know their specialties deeply but who have either know or are willing to learn how to work across disciplinary lines. That's, that's, that's one thing. And then we must have, in addition to those people, we need a process. We need a, a good approach that, that can help us move step by step uh, through this complex challenge of, of bringing the systems together. And it was out of that perceived need for uh, a, a methodology that would bring the people together and put them on a good process, a good step-by-step -step approach that this idea of the ISIS method was born. Uh, putting together a lot of pieces of what sustainable development looked like in practice into, into one fairly straightforward and coherent approach that is simple to understand, but that still captures the complexity and diversity that we need for sustainable development. Yeah, the, uh, the methodologies that we use to try to support universities as well as businesses and communities on sustainable development <clears throat> has a, a few pieces to it. Uh, the first is the actual platform that we provide for people to stand on. We call that the compass. And there we take the English language uh, directions in a compass, north, east, south, and west, and just rename them to nature, economy, society, and well-being, N-E-S-W. Those four categories by total coincidence and chance, line up very well with the theoretical work that had been done for a couple of decades by ecological economists and other system scientists working in the area of sustainable development. So then this compass becomes both a kind of a symbol for sustainability and a framework that people can work with, but also it becomes uh, a, a way of engaging people from different sectors so that the environmental or ecologically involved people are coming from the nature direction, you might say, in business, and economic development planning, etc., out of the east or economic direction. Our social concerns having to do with governance, management, groups, uh, social conditions in, in our com communities and in our universities is, is S for society. And then finally, us as individuals, uh, health, well-being, the individual teaching relationship, family relationships, uh, quality of life, that's W. Uh, so the Compass provides that platform. Then on that platform, we can build essentially a structure that is the, the process for moving from where we are now to a more sustainable way of doing things. We do that in four phases. The first phase is the indicator phase, gathering the information, understanding the key trends in all of those domains that are critical to achieving a sustainable future. 
and understanding how those trends are changing themselves over time. So what really is happening in the economy around us that is critical for making our way to a sustainable future? What's going on in the natural world? What's happening with the water supply, climate change? What's happening with, say, the criminality in the community around the university? Or what's happening in management patterns? Or are people leaving this particular city uh, or, or country even to go seek opportunities elsewhere? What's happening with people's health and age demographics, family relationships, general measurements of happiness, which has become such a serious study of ec economics these days, the economics of happiness? That's the indicator phase. The next phase, after you have enough information, is to understand how these things all affect each other, the cause and effect relationships. The causes of the causes, the effects of the effects, the way things loop around and create vicious cycles, as they're called, or virtuous cycles, where they can build upon each other in destructive or creative ways. And once we understand that a bit better, that's when we're in a good position to begin to choose the innovations. This is the third letter in the ISIS indicator system to innovations. Uh, the interventions, the changes, the actual programs, policies, uh, incentives, that uh, should be inserted in that system at strategic locations, leverage points, as we call them, to have the most positive impact. Uh, and then the last in, that, in this particular planning process or educational process, as we often use it, uh, is strategy. In other words, once you've been through the process of understanding the trends, the system interactions, and the possible innovations, well, then you must understand how to make change, how to actually implement a new policy, how to get people on board when you want to change the curriculum to include something that's altogether new or that's very interdisciplinary. Uh, strategy and understanding the human dynamics of change is, is the, the last and the most important piece of the process. In, in our workshops and, and processes that we lead, if, if you do that uh, successfully, then you arrive at uh, an agreement, a consensus, a, a common view that taking this particular line of action, yes, it is based on our best understanding of what's happening and why and what we can do about it. And then, again, in the best circumstances, those lead to very robust commitments to take action. And we've got lots of case studies about that. But, that, but regardless of whether you use you know, uh, our methodology or not, my proposal is that all successful sustainable in uh, development initiatives in some ways must go through this process of understanding the indicators, having a systemic view, bringing in the right innovations to change those systems and direct them in sustainable ways, and then good strategies for implementation. Well, let me speak first about the role of universities, and particularly universities in the Baltic Sea uh, region, um, because uh, you know, universities have a particularly... It's, all, it's often said that universities have an important role to play. I would say that in this case, universities have an absolutely essential and critical role to play because not only are they framing the next generation of students who will take on jobs and, and need to have this sustainability perspective in those jobs, but the universities themselves as major employers, as institutions, as, uh, as elements of the geography of the cities in which they are found become really important uh, monuments, you might say, to either a sustainable or a non-sustainable way of doing things. So universities are really essential here. And now, I have what I think is some good news from that perspective, because there's some opportunity for sustainable development in university life that uh, I think has at least three dimensions. Um, one is the university's ability to make an impact on the global problems that sustainable development represents, climate change, biodiversity, the gap between rich and poor. Uh, two, there's an opportunity for universities in terms of how they are preparing their students for the employment market of the 21st century. And then three is the opportunity for universities in, in and of themselves as universities in terms of making those institutions even more viable and vital uh, in these times. So first is doing sustainable development, education for sustainable development, bringing a systemic perspective means that universities can contribute to this wave of transformative innovation that we need worldwide to meet the goals that we have. Everything from new energy systems to new management techniques. Universities are uh, where a lot of that new thinking happens. Yeah? So adopting this perspective means that universities can then become what they should become, and in many cases already are, 
and that is major contributors to the new ideas and new thinking that sustainability requires. That's one. Two is, it turns out that the business world has really woken up to sustainable development. If you look at the recent publications like Harvard Business Review or The Economist magazine, you'll discover that uh, there was a 2009 article by several well-known consultants in the field of economic development um, who were saying that, uh, and they had lots of case studies to, back, studies to back this up in the typical Harvard Business Review way, that sustainability, in their view, is now the key driver of innovation in corporate life. Now, I consult to big corporations. I can certainly see that this is happening, and it's, it's, it's real. But my anecdotal evidence doesn't even stack up to the economist survey data, which uh, just a year or two ago noted that something like 70 to 80 percent of CEOs now say that, that sustainable development, sustainability-related issues are, if not all, they're already important, and they're expected to become more important. And that was important or very important, highly prioritized in their business strategy. So that means that universities, by preparing people to think in sustainability terms, are preparing them for where the CEOs of today see their companies going. Uh, in other words, the, you know, the educational dimension of sustainable development is also the competitiveness, competitiveness dimension for corporations. By preparing them for this, they make them more employable, make their students more employable. That's two. And then three is just the university itself. As a place where people can experience satisfaction, life satisfaction, quality of life, uh, inspiration, vision, uh, as well as just saving water, saving energy, becoming a living laboratory for, for the kinds of, of changes and transformations that we see happening in the world. There are plenty of universities, universities already experimenting with this. But this is something that is an unending well of opportunity for the universities as institutions to become uh, um, places of, of experimentation uh, and demonstration for the kinds of change that we need to make in the world. Now, by definition, universities are often uh, conservative places because their responsibility includes holding the knowledge of the past and bringing it forward. And so there's often a tension between that conservative tendency in university life and the needs for innovation that the research dimension of university life also has. And I would propose that this is an opportunity for universities to, to essentially use that wonderful dynamic tension of continuity between what we have always done and what we know we need to learn uh, in their own institutional lives. So I see contribution, including funding, uh, economic and as well as institutional benefits, very real ones for universities who embrace in a serious way education for sustainable development, both in the classrooms and in the institution itself, in the management